Hello, I'm Andy Mee from Habby, and today I want to talk to you through our beautiful um, Habby policy and procedure process map. This is just in the Habby Manager pack, but I thought I'd talk you through it because it's a useful bit of information. Uh, what we've got is we've got stage one, which is risk assessment elimination form, uh, and this basically says how can we eliminate the risk. Now you'll notice next to it, we've got no risk. So if there is no risk and we manage to eliminate it, work proceeds and you need to do very little in regard hand arm vibration. Yeah, it's the easiest way and it makes sense to try and eliminate it. Uh, you can see why companies do it, because if you can't eliminate it, we've got to go through this long process here. Now, all, all honesty, you can't eliminate everything and you've got to be exposed to vibration with an awful lot of tasks out there anyway, so we've got to use grinders and the likes. So what's the next stage? Well, it's in standard health and safety term, we've got to reduce and then control it. But before we control it, we've got to reduce it. How do we reduce it? The document on this process map just takes you through standard, you know, hand arm vibration reduction methods, which is job rotation, and looking at alternative equipment, more appropriate equipment. That doesn't necessarily mean tools that vibrate less. It might be tools that do the job quicker. So you, it's about sort of looking at that. Uh, next bit on that is control. So how do we limit exposure? And that might be through use of the heavy units or whatever systems you've got in place that just limit exposure and stop you know, masses of exposure there. Uh, the next form on it is probably one of my, <laughs> if you have a favorite form on hand arm vibration, this probably be mine. This is the tool inventory form. Um, this is where we list all the tools that are in use, um, or that you'd use, and we also put the vibration magnitudes and where we got the vibration magnitudes from. And it's a very simple, uh, just a very simple document that says an awful lot. And if we are looking at improving processes in the future, this is an integral part to what you do, massive part of what you do. Now, once we've got all this information, it's we've got to start really almost engaging with the operators and that brings us on then to training and it's important we have a training attendance form so we know who's had the training and what training they've had and that we're actually talking about the right things in the training as well because I see a lot of training there which is just a powerpoint it's basically read off a powerpoint which just almost disengages people from the issue uh, we need to make it personal we need to make it really engage and we need to get people actually understanding about the hands and what the damage that vibration does to them is um, so then on the next stage here we've got, which is our control system, is issue heavy units and log books. That's fine, I mean, that's just what we do. Then work proceeds for the operator, away they go. And with that data that comes back, we've then got here is risk toolkit assessment form. This is something, if some of you do know me, I always harp on about, which is a really good task risk assessment. Assessing the risk, assessing the risk of the task is more important and getting the vibration value for a tool. Uh, and a lot of companies forget to do the risk assessment on a particular task. What that means is how much vibration exposure am I getting from this job? And that takes into consideration not only the vibration magnitude of the tool, how long you're using the equipment for as well. Yeah, and that should be in relation to the legal, um, the, legal the, well, the, the exposure limit value and also the exposure action value. So. 100 points and 400 points. So we need to state with this that this daily exposure or well, this particular task is around here and this is how it sits within the legal values. And going on from then, we've got a, a little report form which you can fill in and put data in there. And we've also got the audit procedure. So just to make sure you've gone through all the step-by-step -step processes. Finishing up really, the reason we've done this is to give people a guide because a lot of people ring up and they go, what do I need to do about hand arm vibration? And we, we have to explain every time what you need to do. So the easiest thing for us is to put it down on paper and go, look, here's what you need to do. Here's the documentation to do it. And if you even want it online, we've now got an online version of this, which is even better, isn't it really? Um, listen, if you want any more information, if you want help with HABs, give us a shout, uh, get in touch and we, uh, we're more than happy to help. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have a lovely week. Cheers.